सोलह सौ अठाशी देला टुडे आई वुड लाइक टू से थैंक यू एंड एक्सप्रेस माय ग्रेटिट्यूड टू इंटरनेशनल Tibetan Buddhism Institute in Taiwan. So uh, you invite me to speak uh, about Buddhism. So I'm very honored and happy to share some. Uh, Buddhist teachings. Um, I think in the twenty-first century, uh, Buddhist is very important for many ways. in the daily life so therefore tb uh tt btv uh doing wonderful job i think it's is a very benefit to uh many people bring all teachers and the uh, different ideas put together and uh, share that for um, other people can study and learn i think this is very important mm. uh, very good work so then also i would like to introduce myself um i'm from tibet uh come east and uh, zachoka region so my name is a kulon bache um i study buddhism and practice in my younger age and uh In 1990s I went to America, Europe and many western countries and also uh southeast asia countries in China and many places that um I go and share uh Buddhist teachings as much as possible so and right now mainly uh as best on united states seattle so um that is my short introduction and uh, so um i'm also uh nimapa and uh, so i think that is my uh, short indu- introduction and then uh, <clears throat> today i would like to share um buddhism teaching in the west so it's a buddhism in the 21st century in the western world um tirub nyerchi bi na phyok ba machi tang nang chuwa jin der ba so um 
I have been in the Western world and Europe uh, over 15 years. And uh, I learned a lot of things from uh, Western people. While I'm teaching Buddhism to them, actually I learned a lot of wisdoms and a lot of things from them as well, which is very wonderful that we can exchange this my Buddhist knowledge and the Buddhist uh, practice, I can share those who have interest in the Buddhism. And uh, then I can also learn from uh, them as well. So, <clears throat> In the Western world, it's different than the Eastern. Western is uh, very big <clears throat> and highly developed with science and technology and uh, out structures in the physical world and materialism. It's really powerful. You know, they are kind of uh, top of the world in their technology and science and everything. In the uh, recent time, even these high developed countries And uh, the material world is that they reach the top level. But people, people realize there is a something still missing. Means not fully happy. Even you have everything. Let's say you have a big house, expensive car, and uh, everything. Still, it's not happy. So there is means there is. Definitely some problem there and miss something. There's missing something. And nowadays, there's many scientists and uh, neurologists and uh, many um, learned doctors and uh, uh, all kind of uh, this uh, psychiatrist and many people come together doing some research on about this. You know. what, what's wrong? Why we are not happy? We have everything. All the materialist world, this, uh, you know, worth and everything. Why is still not happy? So they really analyze and investigate what is missing there. So, they finally the answer is missing the inner part of a human being.
our humanity that we need not only outside but we need also inside so in the last decade or so some more and more studies that say definitely we need to develop something inside our own brain heart mind that we need to something developed inside that can make fully happy that can make life happy so now in the buddhism shakyamuni buddha taught these teachings um, even buddhism teaching is like a uh, few thousand years old but now new studies in the science when they research sometimes they find new ideas you know it's a new for scientists the world but it's not really new for Buddhism and when when they found some new ideas in the scientist and how to work on the inner thoughts and mind and how to make it calm, etc. In the Buddhist, it's already there. So Buddha taught this for a long time ago. So now the scientists and research has found this amazing wisdoms and um, this Buddhist teachings that how do really help for everyday life it's lots of them is there already you know so therefore now Buddhism in the world rest it's getting more and more popular and uh, so there's more research is available and uh, more people interest to learn Buddhism so this is generally speaking you know it says uh, Buddhism in the West is uh, getting more and more popular which is good you know Buddha said my teaching is not for only belief my teaching is for you to investigate after investigation then you find something out of it if something is good for you and good for your life then you take it so therefore he said you don't need to Buddhism is not made for belief only you, know? you should be analyzed investigate If you found something through the investigation and through your own research, so then it makes true sense for your own feeling and for on your practice, because that is your own wisdom. That is how you can find out the quality. Mm. The quality is more important than uh, anything or you can say essence essence or quality is very important so therefore this 21st century now in the West so they are investigating Buddhism and uh, you know they measure the meditator the head and put all this different kind of uh, technology and readers and uh, you know signals put everywhere your brain 
they did study this for many people. First, they studied for people who doesn't have, uh, who don't have any belief, any religion, just someone on the street, and they studied the brain. And then they have one record from that study. And then second group of people, and they have uh, some uh, meditation background and uh, Buddhism study, let's say. Then they study that group of head. Then they have other record. So this time, no necessarily lamas or monks only, you know, it could be just lay practitioner. So then this third group, then they study with uh, great practitioners that stay in cave for three years, five years, so on, to meditate continuously. Then they study their brain and mind and they got other record. So now there's a three, three record there. The first group, when they get to deal with some situations and problems, camps, their brain and their mind is uh, very easy to agitate. Let's, for example, if they achieve something or if they get something they are looking for, they're so happy. Their brain is like the happy reader, the science is so high up. And then if they're facing some problems, if something happens, they, if they get to face for problems, then drops really fast, the brain, and the stress is calm eventually. So that is the first group. There are lots of this fast movement, ups and downs. And the second group of this study, they have a little practice and meditations and some knowledge in the Buddhism and meditation. When they face some problems, their mind and brain is a little more relaxed, a little bit more relaxed. They still have a little ups and downs, but a little slow. So that makes actually their neurological systems, and their body, and everything's a little bit more relaxed. They're okay, even if they got to deal with big problems, you know. So the third one, then they measured, and then this, the picture in this brain, like there goes a little more, more steady and more even. Whatever comes, bad situation or good situation, whatever good things or bad things, whatever comes, the mind is more in calm level, you know. So this is the scientist study and res research and result in uh, this 21st century. I think it's very wonderful. If scientists didn't study about this, many people in the outside, they don't have opportunity to learn this meditation and practice in Buddhism. Because, you know, unless you become a Buddhist, unless you have a karma to meet a teacher or, you know, like that way, 
but not so much access outside. But nowadays, there's a lot of access for the Dharma and meditation. I think this is very wonderful, very good. So that means these three levels, what I'm talking, in the West, now they understand If you have everything in outside, it cannot make you fully happy. Maybe it make you some certain happiness, you know. But that kind of a happy is uh, very um, changeable and reliable. And it's also what is called impermanent. You know, it's called impermanent. So um, now scientists and the Western give a name, new name for Buddhism nowadays a nickname, you know. The real name is Buddhism. But now as they say inner science, they're talking about inner science. The Western science, it basically studies outside the outer science. And they said Buddhism is the inner science. That is Buddhist new name for Buddhism. Why they call inner science? It means it cares inside. It talks inside. It talks humanity and heartfelt. And it teaches how to express loving kindness and compassion to others. And how it teaches how to be a good human being inside, insightly. So therefore, it talks more inner science. So now in the Western world, many new practitioners, um, they care these two things. One is uh, outside your business, life, family, etc. The other one is the inner mind in how to make your inner human calm and peace, how to create your inner peaceful, your inner environment more rich. Because outside is rich if you have everything, now you need to make inside rich. So now in the West, this is very popular. And uh, when they first time entered to Buddhism or interest, mainly they think, mm, I want to learn a meditation. I want to learn a practice to make developed my inner humanity and inner nature. So this means, you know, you want to develop something inside. So this is very, very new for West, you know. So 
But in East, I think in a way, we have this uh, wisdom, and we have a Buddhism that long enough. In a way, we know there is uh, some things you need to do inside. Buddha is not taught for everything to do for outside. So we know that a little bit, I think, more than Western, I'd say. But it's not really necessarily that, you know, I'm, I'm not, not saying that uh, um, Asians doing better than Western. Because knowing is only, that is the, some steady level. And that is also called um, either literature or um, so academic, academic level. Sometimes literature and academic only by itself also won't help your inner development. Of course, you need to study Buddhism a little bit to according to practice and bring it into. But mainly important is really you need to take the essence the essence of Buddhism and merging into your heart and bring that into daily life. So use it. Basically, you use it. You know, you knowing Buddhism wisdom and you believe Buddhism. Those two, only those two things, is not enough. You know? you bringing it in your heart, mind, and you take actions with it, and bring that into everyday life. So in the West, now is uh, people try to do that, to integrate Buddhism into everyday life. So, um, I have many Western uh, students. Sometimes they have a problem. They come and asking questions to how to face the problems, how to facing the problems. Oftentimes my answer is do not blame outside. Do not be lost in outside. Even you think the problem is coming from outside. You, s you should analyze. You should study. You should examine your inner mind, your insight. What these problems come from? Check yourself first. And that is my answer. And oftentimes, it helps and it works. Because the humans have a habit that when problems come, we always may be ready to blame someone. And always thinking this problem is made by someone. But sometimes this problem is coming from your own mind. Basically, you can create problem through your mind. So therefore, 
when problem comes, I think we first have to check our brain and then feeling level and see what is problem and what is the nature of this problem. How do I can solve this problem? Through peaceful mind, through skillful ways, and maybe use the wisdom of Buddhism. You know, that's I think important. Then we not dependent on everything, on others. You know. So, so that is my brief um, talk and share the experience of Buddhism in the 21st century in the Western world and how do they deal with and uh, so this is a just short story about that i hope you get something from this and help your life and you can learn something this conversation. Um, the way I'm talking here is really from um, everyday life, the point of view of everyday life. I'm not talking scholarly in the Buddhism, you know, I'm talking into bringing into uh, practice level and, you know, how to use in everyday life. I hope there will be some benefit for all of you. Thank you. Hello,大家好,我是任正家村人伯杰。我们一起成立一个张传佛教的网络电视台,所以呢,大家尽量帮忙,负责。Amido.